next? Uh, I'm playing an original song called uh, Floor Baloney. Next. So like, to be or not to be? Next. Is that the question? Can I do it now? Yep. I'm an old cow hand and my legs ain't bowed. Next. 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 Ready? Okay then. Next. I can't see anything. Where? Where? <coughs> Ooh. Doctor, I'm feeling. Oh no, what is it? Sorry. Oh, not good. I'm sorry. Give <laughs> someone else one first. I'm sorry. Next. It's the Malt Jupiter Theater's Real Brief. Featuring cranes, concrete, and scuba divers in the theater's construction build-out update. Thank you for the music. A visit with the cast of Mamma Mia! A new, old-fashioned Drinking with Jay. Did you know? With Christina Van Vliet Renasco. All of this and more in this edition of Real Brief. Since our last update, our construction team has been hard at work laying the literal foundations for the new Maltz Jupiter Theater. Once demolition was completed and the site was cleared away, crews began removing old foundations of the building. The orchestra pit was excavated and removed. New topsoil was laid down and packed flat to prepare for the new foundation. Crews installed footers in the front of the building for the porte cochere and around the back of the building for the new entrance to the Second Space Theater. Foundations were also started on the north side of the building for the stairwell and elevator shaft for the new Goldner Conservatory of Performing Arts entrance. On the west side of the building, our new three-story production center requires additional support underground. Crews used a large auger to bore deep holes into the ground and then fill those holes with steel and concrete to create a system of supportive columns under the building. These secant piles reach down 100 feet into the ground in some areas. Work continued underground as steel sheet piles were installed around the perimeter of what will be the new orchestra pit and trap room. These piles were welded to more steel, creating a watertight metal box that is now being excavated. As crews dig down, groundwater comes up, turning our orchestra pit into a temporary swimming pool.
professional divers were brought in to finish the foundation work underwater. Meanwhile, there's been some more visual progress on the north and east sides of the building. Bricks are being laid to frame out the first story, creating new entrances to the second space than the Goldner Conservatory of Performing Arts. Connecting our existing lobby to the new conservatory entrance will be our new gift shop wardrobe, which will offer unique souvenirs and Maltz Jupiter Theater merchandise. There may not be much to see from beyond the fence quite yet, but it won't be long now until our new spaces really begin to take shape. Hi, and welcome to Did You Know? I'm Christina Van Vliet Renosco, the Maltz Jupiter Theater's Development Events and Special Project Manager. Did you know? That whistling on stage or backstage in a theater has long been considered bad luck? This superstition of whistling on stage stems from the time before mechanized sets and backdrops. Back then, all the rigging for sets and lighting, etc., were all operated by hand using ropes. As such, the backstage crew was often filled with sailors, as they literally knew the ropes. Just like on a ship at the time, commands and signals were given with distinct whistles. Therefore, if an actor or someone else were to nonchalantly whistle, it could cause confusion and could be catastrophic. Have you ever seen the rigging system of a theater? It's quite complex and dangerous, especially the counterweight systems, which are still pretty common in theaters throughout the world. The best way to make sure you didn't become a theater ghost was to refrain from whistling altogether. The rule is stuck and it's become a superstition. You can help us keep live theater alive and well in our community by becoming a member of the Circle of Friends today. Welcome back to Drinking with Jay. In 1806, the drink now known as the Old Fashioned was a potent concoction of spirits, bitters, water, and sugar. It was also referred to at the time as a bittered sling. By the 1860s, it was common for orange curacao, absinthe, and other liqueurs to be added to the cocktail. The most popular of the en vogue Old Fashioned cocktails were made with whiskey and rye, but today, we're making a contemporary old fashioned made with bourbon. What you'll need for this recipe is bourbon. I like to use the Woodford Reserve. Simple syrup, which can be purchased at the store or made at home. It's very easy. It's just one part sugar, one part water, boiled on the stove and set to cool. Bitters, and I like to use orange bitters, and garnished with an orange rind. First, what you're going to do is you're going to take the simple syrup and just wet the bottom of the glass. Not too much. Next comes your delicious bourbon. Followed by orange bitters. Just a couple dashes. Now you're going to add your ice. I don't like to use a lot of ice cubes. I like to use one large cube. Add that to your drink. Give it a nice stir. And finally, a garnish of orange rind. There we go, just for a little extra orange flavor. And there you have it, a bourbon old fashioned. Enjoy. To get directions to make this drink, go to jupitertheater.org slash cocktail underscore recipe. Enjoy. One of the most successful jukebox musicals in history, Mamma Mia, was born in London's West End before moving to Broadway for its 14-year run, making it the ninth longest-running musical. 
Over 65 million people have seen the show, grossing a staggering $4 billion worldwide. The Maltz Jupiter Theater produced its critically acclaimed version of the show on its stage two years ago and was the highest grossing production of the theater's history, selling out four weeks and earning over a million dollars in ticket sales. Let's take a look. Just one look and I can hear the rain. One more look and I forget everything. Whoa, whoa. Mama mia, here I go again. My, my, how can I resist ya? Mama mia, does it show again? My, my, just how much I resist ya? Mama mia, here I go again. Our production, directed and choreographed by talented Mark Martino, was joined by Elise Kinnan as associate director and co-choreographer, who also took on the saucy role of Tanya. Today we are joined by Elise along with other cast members of the show, Becca Andrews, Jim Ballard, Mary Mossberg, Margaret Moreland, and Peter Simon Hilton. Hi everybody! Hi! Hi! Hi. Hi. <laughs> We're now over a year since we've been able to create and perform in shows on our stages. In previous versions of Real Brief, I've been asking everyone what they've been doing through COVID-19, but I also want to know what you've missed the most in this long absence. Becca? Oh my goodness. Well, uh, I would say first, the biggest thing I've been doing has been um, just really like digging into my relationships in my life with um, with my partner, with my friends, with my family, um, trying to take this time to uh, really enjoy and be grateful for the community that I have. And then uh, the biggest thing I miss, oh my gosh, I would say the biggest thing I miss would be the theater community. Um, getting to do a show and meet new people and reconnect with old friends that I've worked with before um, is the biggest thing I miss. And then you just had a, a, a major event in your life, too. Yes, yes. I did just get married. Yes, I eloped to Hawaii. Yeah, it was it was amazing. Um, our wedding got canceled. So we were just like, you know, screw it. We're going to Hawaii. And we got married. And it's been awesome. Oh, fantastic. Jim, awesome. Jim did you get married? What have you been up to? Uh, no, but I, <laughs> I did get engaged. So. Um, oh, yes! Yeah. <laughs> that is news. Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. So, yeah, it's been it's been great, and you know, I, I actually Margo and I closed the production of another Mamma Mia like right before the world ended, theater world ended, and so uh, you know we we did that, and we and then I've just been moved. I've been I don't even I've changed my address about I don't know seven times in the last uh, nine months. So, um, I've just, I'm in Montana right now. I'm up on the top of a mountain, literally, as we speak. And um, oh, so, it's, um, it doesn't suck. I'll just, I'll just say that. Hey, Mary, what have you been up to? Oh, my journey has been so lucky, I have to say. Uh, right after we closed Mamma Mia, uh, I went back to the city and started temping, as you do, between gigs. And uh, the place I was temping at wanted to hire me, which my automatic answer is always, no, of course not. I'm an actor. I have to be available. Uh, and then my boyfriend and I uh, finally found an apartment to buy. So I thought, hmm, maybe I should take that job <laughs> for like maybe a year, you know, just to get through all those initial costs and look good sure. for the bank and all that. So I took this job. And we bought our apartment, hallelujah, and it's wonderful. And it's we've been together 14 years and never lived together. So this has been amazing to, that we finally live together. And then less than a year from taking the job, COVID hits. And now I can't work as an actor, but I have this job that I was thinking I would be quitting at this point. And now was so grateful to have. Marco, 
What's been on your calendar these days? Oh, dear God. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Um, so I had a hip replacement after um, doing two more shows after our uh, Mamma Mia, and then was thrilled to be able to do another Mamma Mia in January before, as Jim said, the world totally uh, dissolved in front of us. And um, my life has completely gone awry. <laughs> I lost my mother um, in August of last year. Uh, in I'm 2020. so sorry. So, thank you. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, but I have a new hip. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm trying to make the best of every situation as usual. And I can't wait to hug people again. I'm, that's the one thing I miss, being in complete isolation and, and a little bit of stability. So Peter, you're over in England. How's it going there? I am, yes, we're in lockdown. Um, I'm with my mother and Vanessa, my wife, Vanessa Morosco, um, uh, who's also, of course, worked at the mall. Um, and we're looking after my mom until she gets her second jab, um, as they say here in the States, um, which will be uh, hopefully quite soon. And, uh, and then we'll come back to, uh, to NYC. We've been here for four months. We've actually pivoted our careers and um, we've been creating video content for uh, diversity and inclusion videos that are training BlackRock um, uh, investment uh, bankers. Uh, in uh, sensitivity uh, training. But one of the things that makes me miss, and this is what I really miss, is travel. I miss mm. traveling around the world, seeing people from different cultures, um, seeing you know our, our active friends all around the world. Oh, we love that. <laughs> Elise, how about you? When are you coming to Jupiter, Florida? Hopefully very soon. I can't wait to see all of the you know new changes that have been going on with the theater. Um, I got kind of lucky that when everything hit, um, I went to Australia and uh, spent three months at home in Oz. Uh, definitely, you know, way less uh, issues with the pandemic in Australia. The day that I boarded the flight, they announced as we got on the plane, Australia has officially closed their borders. If you are not an Australian citizen or resident, you need to leave the airplane. Uh, so a mm. bunch of people got up and had to leave. <laughs> Uh, which I was just like, oh my goodness, imagine if you're about to go on your honeymoon and <laughs> you're like boarded the plane, like ready to go and they're like, get off the airplane. Um, so I looked down in Oz for three months and then I got back and I got accepted into Yale to study psychology. Congrats. Wow. Congrats. Amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> like, nice. right. oh, like, like, Yale? You know. You know. Yeah. Nice. It's so good to see all of you. When I first saw Mamma Mia, I enjoyed the production as much as anyone for the great songs by Ava. And although I think that Mark and Elise, along with this glorious cast, created a jukebox musical that had the depth of Chekhov, the more I saw the show, I realized how well crafted it is. Elise and Mary, why are audiences so drawn to this story? You, you know, I think there's a chemistry to this script that is, um, it's, you don't see it at first, like you were saying, it's, it's um, sort of subtle. Uh, it, it looks like it's going to be just thin, thin bubble gum. Uh, and it, it gives you that feeling, that fun, you know, we're just having fun feeling, but it, the way it's crafted and it's connected together, it, it has a an undeniable chemistry that people all over the world have gravitated to. There's so much heart in the musical, and I think that's what's really awesome about, especially working at the Malt Stupid Theatre, it invites the audience in. You know, we allow people to get intimate with us, you know, given the space, and you don't realize how much heart there is. Um, so Peter and Jim, you really can't do a disco score without great dancing. When you were cast in the show, did you worry about the dance steps you would have to learn? No, of course not. That's why I was hired, Andrew, for my I, dance. I, I Ask know. Elise, she'll tell you. Elise will tell you oh, that yeah. I'm one of the best dancers that she's ever seen. <laughs> Woo! Yes, worldwide. I, I, I'd actually worked with Mark before, so he saw how bad I was. So I yeah, had a lot of confidence going into the rehearsal process because I knew that he could make me good again. <laughs> <laughs> Becca, you recently got married, as we just said. Before you walked down the aisle, did you have similar feelings to what Sophie felt when you got married eight times a week? 
Oh gosh. Um, I think, yeah, Sophie just is, is so eager to, um, find her dad so she can, so she can really know who she is and, um, and she can move on with her life. And I think that, um, the past couple of years and really this pandemic has really helped me understand like what I'm made of and who I am and um, how I can be the best version of myself, even during a really, really traumatized, traumatizing time. Um, so absolutely. I can totally relate with that feeling of, okay, how am I going to, how am I going to bring my best self to the table every single day when I'm in this relationship? Marco, Mary and Elise, the true success of a production is believing the friendship that exists between old friends. What did you draw from rehearsals to create that magic? That's easy for me. <laughs> um, it, it was it was like kismet from day one. You know, I have a relationship, a friendship with, with Elise already. And Mary was just the first day of rehearsal right there. And it was, it was like, um, it was meant to be. It was total shared as we say or kismet um meant to be and it, it it was such a strong friendship and it's it is continued you know mary and i every once in a while will email and talk and um you know it's just uh, i i miss them i started a friendship in pretend um but it has continued to be a reality so it was it was just a joy Listen, I, Peter, I don't mean to pick on you, but we got to go back to this. You cracked me up with your goofy dancing every night. Is that how you really dance? You got to just be honest. It, it, it's really close. It's yeah. for, for nostalgia's sake, can we just see a little bit of it? <laughs> I don't know why I can fit it into this. This is a really small, but I mean, I mean, Harry was big, but I mean, he, he, he used to do he would do this funny thing, which like some sort of Persian dancing thing that he would do. I don't know whether he'd ever listen. And then he would suddenly like. <laughs> I think it just made it relatable. Well, to end today, I have a question for all of you. Sophie posts three letters out to her dads to invite them to her wedding. With all of us being so isolated through COVID-19, if you could only post a letter to one person throughout this time, who would you write to? And what would it say? Let's start with Becca. You know what? I'm going to be a little cliche and I'm going to say my dad. I think um, I would send a letter to my dad and um, pour my heart out and give all my love and gratitude to my dad. Oh, lovely. How about you, Jim? Oh, wow. That's a tough one. Um, I'm not going to say who the person is because the person knows who it would be, but it would just say, I'm sorry. And then. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mary, how about you? I would probably send one to my sister who's had a, a rough go of it in the last several years, but then you add the pandemic on top of it and you, but her, her, her struggles were so much harder than a pandemic that it was kind of like, you got this. Like, mm. pandemic, shmandemic, you're going to be fine. So I would have probably, probably her. Yeah. Nice. Marco? Uh, for me, it's definitely my brother. Um, he and I are, you know, the two musketeers. And with everything that's been going on, uh, in every situation he's just sort of been my my rock and mm. uh i'm so so blessed to have a, a friendship as well as a relationship with my brother the way he is he's just he's the best oh that's nice peter um i would send uh possibly a little video letter to octavia uh, uh my daughter who's uh who's 13 just about to turn 14. Uh, she lives with a mum in in nashville and uh, because of the lockdown and everything like that, uh, we haven't seen her um, since, uh, well, since December, Long time. Uh, last December. So like a uh, whole year. Um, uh, and so uh, I'd send her something, uh, we, we talk all the time, we text all the time, but I'd probably send her an embarrassing uh, dance or something like that. Um, <laughs> she she and, could just watch this. Because <laughs> so, she's just at that really uh, real age where her dad embarrasses her. So yeah. I, I would I would take full advantage of that. Uh, I love it. Elise? <laughs> 
I'd send a letter to、uh, Andrew Cato begging him to remount our production <laughs>、yeah. and、uh, hire us all for the rest of our lives. You win. You can count on that. You can count on that. Who cares this... about family? <laughs>、yeah. Stop and, it, Andrew. <laughs> and with this big, beautiful building that we're getting, I can't wait because it's it's really in many ways meant to celebrate all of you、um, with this gorgeous rehearsal hall on the first floor and and. And the、uh, the artists that we bring in, the, the costume designers being on the second floor, you know, just really, it's going to be a wonderful opportunity to honor the people who have done such great work under less than great,、um, you know, situations、uh, from a facility standpoint. So we're excited、uh, for that. So、um, I, I hope I didn't bring down the room too much with my question about the letter.、Um, but let's end on a high note. So I just wanted to say I'm so grateful to this amazing cast: Becca Andrews, Jim Ballard, Mary Mossberg, Morgan Morland, Peter Simon Hilton, and Elise Kinnan. Mamma Mia ends with a big mega mix. So today, let's go out with our own isolation mega mix: a five, six, seven, eight.